A black man is abducted and held against his will, fat people are treated like inhuman monsters, and a nerd gets injected with bird semen for seemingly no reason. So, you know, just your average typical run-of-the-mill 80s sex comedy. The fuck is this? Welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, and however else you wish to self-identify, to TFIT, the podcast that we have to abbreviate because apparently there are algorithms on YouTube <laughs> that limit search results when you swear in the first minute of the episode. Which uh, is a, a new thing that I learned. It appears the man is trying to shut us down. Yeah, uh, we know <laughs> that you tune into this podcast for the hardcore swearing and the naughty language. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and not the film commentary. Yeah. And uh, general humorous banter. So just bear with us. We'll we'll get to it. It's coming. It's it will just it, it'll just be later on in the show. Now my name's Kaz Lescard, and with me is my co-host Jameson Raptor. Fuck yeah, it is. How's it going? <laughs> Not bad. I think I was watching the time bar for like the exact minute <laughs> that, was, that we crossed over the one. <laughs> that was my Michael Buffer Oprah moment. Let's there. get ready to rumble. Let's get ready to rafter. <laughs> T-shirt. Fuck. There we go. Yeah. We're a minute twenty now. We can. Mm -hmm. We can. We can do it. We're, uh, is this good hard hitting commentary for you? You like this, this listener? It's the smartest show on the internet. Mm -hmm. Welcome. <laughs> How you, how's it going, Jameson? It's going well. It's a beautiful day out, and a, we're cooped up inside. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful sunny day. A uh, beautiful sunny Saturday at uh, two p.m. And we're inside watching a movie that I found on YouTube. Mm. Well, we're gonna jump right into something new here because mm. uh, I want to do something. A little different with this intro today. We're all fairly new to this uh, whole podcast game here, and when we choose a movie to do on the show, I do a fair amount of research on who made it and the people who are in it and the year that it was made. But after the episodes are in the can, sometimes I go back and I do some more research, and uh, I to find catch misinformation that you're spreading out there, like our Coolio fiasco. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is me finding new chunks of information that probably would have been cool if we had mentioned them in the episodes that we were doing them on. Mm. Uh, so I want to jump in now to a new segment that I like to call Probably Should Have Mentioned That. Probably should, probably should have, probably should have, probably should have mentioned that, prob. <laughs> There we go. There's our song. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the first segment on Rob, I should have mentioned that, I want to go all the way back to episode two and share some delightful information I found about the director of Laser Mission. Uh, B.J. Davis? Mr. B.J. Davis. Mm. Uh, we had uh, quite a lot of fun. At his expense. At his every... expense. But B.J. Davis is quite a fascinating individual for a variety of reasons. So it's worth mentioning that B.J. Davis currently holds two world records. Really? Yes, he holds the world record for all most uses of of one song in a movie. <laughs> He's got that too. Yeah. <laughs> he holds the uh, world record for a high fall from a helicopter into the ocean from a height of 180 feet. God damn! And he holds the world record for an aerial neck suspension beneath a helicopter at 70 miles per hour at a thousand feet for a period of 20 minutes. Holy shit! Yeah, no joke. We're we're making fun of your initials, but uh, B.J. Davis, you're pretty badass, dude. This is way more interesting than, like, half the things that happen in Laser Mission. <laughs> but hold on. Mm. Get ready, Jameson. Okay. Because as I was researching this last night, I, uh, I fell down an information rabbit hole, and I unearthed something I genuinely did not expect to find. Tell me this thing. B.J. Davis is at the center of a massive government conspiracy. Huh? And it's... What, how deep of a dive did you go? Did I, 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 I may be on a couple of watch lists now. Actually, that's no joke. While I was re refreshing my search bar, I was taking a look at everything that I was looking at, and I'm all like, I, this is tinfoil hat territory okay. right now. Now, okay, so this is... I'm, Let's hear some B.J. Bo Davis conspiracy theories. I'm about to do quite a bit of reading, and I'm going to be a good podcaster, and I'm going to cite my sources. A lot of this information I'm getting off of the variety Variety.com article written by John Anderson. So if you want to read more about that, you can look that up. Now, this story actually has more to do with Davis's wife, Julia Davis, 
okay. who is also a writer, director, and a stunt woman All right. uh, alongside her husband. But she used to be a U.S. Customs officer who noticed a seemingly critical lapse in security that occurred on July 4th, 2004. Now, what Julia Davis claims is that on that day, she noticed 23 citizens from special interest countries, aka terrorist countries, Mm -hmm. who were allowed entry into the U.S. without the required paperwork or interrogation. What Davis allegedly set off was a bureaucratic effort to avoid a PR disaster which led to her being labeled a terrorist threat. It set off an ongoing campaign to discredit both her and BJ and resulted in a midday raid on their home by Black Hawk helicopters and a battalion of Spec Ops soldiers. Jesus. A raid that was videotaped and confirmed by the ICE investigators that ordered it. Now, that's not even the most bizarre aspect of this story. Jesus Christ. Here's the craziest thing. I couldn't believe Mm. this when, when I found out about this. Julia Davis Clay that this conspiracy is tangentially connected to the deaths of four people, including her next-door neighbor, who filmed the Black Hawk raid, Mm -hmm. as well as, and I swear to God I'm not making this up, Brittany Murphy and her husband Simon Monjack, who you remember died under mysterious circumstances. What? Yeah. Oh, the the Davises have been very open about all of this. There's hours of radio interview footage of the both of them talking about this at length. B.J. Davis produced uh, an hour and 38 documentary called Top Priority, The Terror Within. Good lord. And, yeah, so this is a whole... Okay, look. So, so listener, if you start getting a bunch of bullshit conspiracy videos recommended to you in your YouTube feed, you have us to thank for that. So here's the thing. This (laughs) conspiracy videos and, like, mercenary man. This is a... Yeah. (laughs) That's going to be your recommendation. Can you imagine, like, the footage of, like, the Black Hawk helicopter, but, like, someone someone's just put mercenary man on Undercutting all the race. Um, (laughs) So, like, this this is a silly comedy podcast about, like, strange movies, so I don't want to go in, into this any more than we already mm-hmm. have. I just had to mention that while researching the director of Laser Mission, I uncovered a government conspiracy that may have led to the death of Luann from King of the Hill. That was that was the furthest <laughs> thing I thought I would uncover when I was looking this up. Mm-hmm. So, um... So, uh, you're not gonna go... You're not sleeping at your place tonight. You're, you're pretty much gonna go live off the grid at this point, eh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> only if I keep asking the questions. Well, uh, BJ and Julia Davis uh, are both alive and well, and they're mm-hmm. both still working, so I don't know what happened. I don't know if if, if this is still going on or whatnot. Anyway, um... Probably should. Probably should have. Probably should have. Probably should have mentioned that prob. Do-do-do-do. All right. Well, there's there's the intro to that. Let's. Uh, How does this segue into the movie we're gonna watch today? Okay. Here's a little minor. Probably should have mentioned that. Probably should have mentioned that. Prob. Let's also briefly talk about our last episode, Hot Dog the Movie. Mm-hmm. Just as I was like getting over it. Now talking about uh, research that I should have done the first time. Last episode, uh, we were asking a lot of questions about the plot and the production of a uh, Hot Dog the Movie. Questioning and- just like their general judgments. Yeah. And what is wrong with you? Stuff like that. And um, the briefest of uh, Google searches, in fact, it's the... Uh, <laughs> we really should research. So, we're only two goddamn human beings. Yeah. Like, we need a team to do this kind of stuff. So if you take a look at uh, Hot Dog the Movie uh, into the Google, third article down, you will find a very informative essay called The Unofficial Oral History of Hot Dog the Movie. Whoa. Ri- written by Sam Moulton and Frederick Ryan. And uh, I won't go into the whole thing here because uh, it's a really interesting article. And if you uh, if you liked our last episode, uh, you should go and check it out because it answers a lot of questions. But the main light that it shines on is the guy who wrote it, Mike Marvin. It was a semi autobiographical movie, bullshit, written by <laughs> written by his own experiences as a skier and as a ski documentarian. And he was also the first assistant director on the movie as well. So really, more than Peter Markle, a hot dog movie really is Mike Marvin's baby. Mike Marvin actually fired Peter Markle after the movie was over, kicked him out of the editing bay, Mm -hmm. and uh, did a lot of the (laughs) editing himself. So yeah, if anyone should be blamed for Hot Dog the Movie, it should be Mike Marvin. And the blame 
also falls squarely onto today's movie because, as I mentioned yeah. at the end of our last episode, Mike Marvin went on to have a directing career, and his first film as a director is the movie we're going to be taking a look at today. And to help us out with that, we have a very special guest joining us. He is an actor and a voiceover actor. We worked together in a fringe show that I directed back in uh, 2014. Please welcome to the show, Nick Rinka. <laughs> Nick Rinko, welcome. Welcome to uh, The Fuck Is This. How you, uh, how, you, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on The Fuck Is This. I'm honored. <laughs> I'm honored, he says. We've never yeah. had... Our second guest, and we've never once had an honor. Well, I'm I'm stoked. Nice. Yeah. Have nice. you done Have you done podcasts? Before? No, but I listen to like a lot of. I mean, listen to one podcast really. Yeah. Like every day. So. Yeah. Yeah. What's What's that? Uh, Talking tunes with Rob Paulson. Excellent. Mm. Voice. Yeah. So that's what I listen to every day. Yeah, so yeah, this is. I'm really excited. So the whole concept behind this podcast is we wanted to focus on not necessarily bad movies. Although we do cover quite a few. <laughs> it just kind of comes, comes out that way sometimes, it seems. But we want to find, we want to focus on just the strangest, most bizarre movies out there that, and this is why we've named the podcast thusly, you know, you, you hold the box in your hand. We call it the T-Fit experience, where you see a movie and you can't help but ask, you know, what the fuck is this? Like, who, who, <laughs> made, who, made, who made this? How did this, how did this come how did into... They, how did they land this actor in this movie? This but, is sort of like the, the, we're sticking the landing of a semi-trilogy that we kind of stumbled upon. Well, we'll explain the story behind why we're watching this particular movie today, but have, have you you ever had a T-Fit experience? Is there a movie that you remember that started off with you taking a look at it and just being baffled? Like, what is this? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Honestly, I think it was, uh, yeah. it was, um, I think it was a racer head. Yeah, that's um, a, yeah. I that, remember watching that and I remember like a screaming baby at one point. I don't remember. I think yeah, I watched Racer my mind. Head's a crazy mm-hmm. movie. But yeah. I don't, it was a long time ago, but I think the, the actually the one that was really, what the fuck is this, was uh, a movie called Rubber. Right of it. Oh, it's yeah. about a rolling the, tire. It's the tire that kills people, powers. right? Yeah. I yeah. stopped the movie. I, I could watch stuff just because if I, mean, I had to stop it at some point when it was rolling into a scene, like watching this girl take a shower, and I was like, I'm done. I just it's so <laughs> so bad. I was just yeah. like, it was so bad to the point where like you could watch stupid movies to laugh at. But yeah, like, it was that bad that like I stopped it. But yeah. I don't know. Maybe I... that was a weird movie. I watched that. <laughs> I watched that all the way through. <laughs> it starts off. It's like, oh, it's a killer tire, and you're like, oh, okay. Okay, it's one of these, and then yeah. it, but it turns out it's like an avant-garde. Yeah, I was gonna say, is movie? this sort of like a commentary on like people will watch anything kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah. it has, has something to do with that. That's <laughs> interesting that you mentioned Eraserhead. That's that's a that's a subsection of this whole thing that I hadn't even thought of because I mean, Eraserhead is a. Um, is you know a really well known classic independent movie. It's the first thing that David Lynch ever did. But at one point in time, it must have been a oh, fuck is this movie because it's just the the stark image of the guy with the hair and mm-hmm. just the title. Yeah, and you yeah. watch it and you're like, what is an eraser head? Yeah, it's, like, it's been a while since I've seen it too. So but I just maybe that's what I took from it. It was yeah. like high school and I was like, what? yeah, oh, that movie that, <laughs> that movie puts you in a weird mood. I think it did that much. Yeah. yeah, I used to watch a lot of like weird ass movies with. My mm-hmm. one of my best friends who lives in Japan now, but um, yeah, I watched a lot of cool movies mm-hmm. and a lot of bad movies. Nice. <laughs> I remember watching Pi for the first time. Pi. Pi. It's just about like a, a mathematician who goes. I, is that and, a David Lynch one too? That's, no. Darren Aronofsky. Yes. I watched yes. that with him. Yeah, it was all black and white, right? Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. we watched that too. We watched mm. a lot. It was perfect. I'm on this podcast. I watched. Yeah. <laughs> I, re- I, I, I remember um, my high school math teacher made us watch Pi. One day oh. in class, because it was what? math related, and, and then like, it gets well, to the what? end where he like drills into his head. I think, and mm-hmm. yeah, oh we God. uh, well, so, so stick to math, kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not watching anything remotely close to a David Lynch or a Darren Aronofsky yeah. movie here today. <laughs> so let me give you a bit of a background. So. uh Two episodes ago, Jameson showed me a movie called Aspen Extreme, which is this 90s ski movie that built itself as Top Gun on the Slopes. Ah, And it was uh, was terrible. It was pretty bad. And at the end of that, Uh I said, I have a ski movie to show you. Mm -hmm. And I showed him a movie called Hot Dog the Movie. Which is much more of like a screwball comedy, like a Porky's. Whereas, like, Aspen Extreme was really kind of... It was a really downer kind of movie. Oh, 
Uh, it was hot a, dog was like a little bit like the other side of the uh, of the coin. It was an eighties sex comedy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was uh, it, the the person who first showed it to me was our guest on our last episode. Uh, was a little person you know, uh, Stephen Beaver. Oh, was the guy Stephen who, Beaver was the guy who uh, showed that to me, and he really loved that movie. And then by the end of the episode, <laughs> we basically we ruined the movie for him because yeah. uh, he <laughs> forgot <laughs> he forgot how problematically rapey it was. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah, Jesus! And so I ruined I ruined one of Stephen's favorite movies. Mm, one of his guilty pleasures. But what came about at the end of that episode, uh, I was doing uh, my research. The guy who wrote Hot Dog the Movie is a gentleman named Mike Marvin. And as I was going into his IMDb, I found out that he also has a directing career. And the writer of Hot Dog the Movie's first movie that he directed was called Hamburger the Motion Picture. So here's the through line. We started with Aspen Extreme, we went to Hot Dog, and now we're to Hamburgers. Now we're in Hamburgers. And <laughs> this is the only bridge between them because it's tangentially about skiing, just like Aspen Extreme was, and now... I don't even know what the fuck hamburger the movie. Uh, this has, guy has a vision about like yeah. fast food, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this has nothing. <laughs> this has absolutely nothing to do with skiing yeah. whatsoever. <laughs> so, hamburger the motion picture. Yeah, it's almost uh, exclusively about uh, fast food. It's actually based on the concept of Hamburger University. Do I, either of you remember what that is? I vaguely remember it was like where they would send like McDonald's or Burger King workers. Strictly McDonald's. Okay. I don't know if Burger King has enough money to do that but yeah it, hamburger university is a thing that actually still exists but it's a it basically it's a big training program for people who want to open their own mcdonald's chains and yeah rather than you know work your way up through the system this is like an actual university program diploma program that you can go and you can take and uh, i i think they're still operational today as far as i can tell but in 1986 when this movie uh debuted in the dumping grounds of January, which incidentally uh, was also the month Hot Dog was released. Uh, I don't, I don't think people had a lot of uh, good month for food movies. Uh, good, yeah. good, good, good month for these uh, raunchy '80s teen sex comedies. Dump, <laughs> dump them in the first month and forget about them. Mm. So yeah, a Hamburger, the motion picture starring uh, Bovine University. <laughs> starring what was that? That's a Simpsons. It thing, is right? like when yeah. I when I grew up, I'm going to Bovine University. Oh, that's, it's just a that's what my mind belt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So directed by Mike Marvin, who went out to direct some other stuff, uh, which we'll get to uh, later on in the show. Written by a guy named Donald Ross, who didn't really go on to do too much more. He wrote for a lot of TV. He wrote 12 episodes of The Love Boat and 16 episodes of Murder, She Wrote. So, so my, this could either be, like, kind of compelling or... No, it's not. It's All not. Right. It's, I'm just, just going to warn you right now, this is a, this is a stupid movie. All right. This is a stupid movie <laughs> we're about to watch. All right. uh, it's on YouTube. The quality is terrible, but uh, yeah, so Some yeah, we're, we're going to jump into that and then we'll talk about that but I, I, I was, before we do that I just want to give both of you a warning so there are two lives that we all live there's the life you've lived before you've heard the opening theme song to Hamburger the Motion Picture and this is the life you live <laughs> after you've heard the theme song to Hamburger the Motion Picture mm-hmm. which is a song called Hamburgers for America and I just want to I want you to enjoy these fleeting few seconds because once you hear Hamburgers for America, you will never forget it. It will be in your head. I'm pretty excited, guys. Should I call my parents and tell them I love them? Do, like, no, <laughs> let's all call our parents. You at home, call, 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 your, tower, yeah. call, call your call your parents, call your loved ones, because we're going to be playing, so you're all going to hear it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, call your loved ones. We're going to watch Hamburger with a Motion Picture. We'll see you after the break. Yeah, I did warn you that that song. What I what I forgot is that this, this movie has more more than one amazing hamburger related song, and it has like five of them. Anyway, well, we're back. Uh, we're back. Uh, Nick, you mentioned that while we were watching this, that uh, when I told you the title of the movie we were going to watch, uh, this wasn't 
the type of movie you were expecting to see. Out of curiosity, what movie did you think Hamburger the Motion Picture was going to be? I honestly didn't know, but I wasn't expecting that. No? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I don't know, like, it was about hamburgers. It was about but nothing but hamburgers. It's, yeah, I don't know, I just wasn't, ex- it was It really... wasn't always about hamburgers, sometimes That's it was true. about fries. That's true. <laughs> And a uh, chicken subplot and that it, uh, kind of oh, got into really creepy, dark territory. It was about sex, I guess. I don't know <laughs> what the hell that chicken subplot was going on about. Yeah, okay, so Hamburger the Motion Picture, wow. All right, so yeah, this is our um, second 80s sex comedy in a row. It didn't have a lot of the problematic <laughs> aspects that Hot Dog the movie had. It, except in one area with the uh, the Hispanic woman and the... Uh, who, who who tries to, to rape our main character... By, at gunpoint. At gunpoint. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, our main guy who I think his name was like Alex Procto. Not even close, uh, his name was Russell. Russell, well, <laughs> yeah. I, I, well, I got that mixed up wrong. But anyways, he has been kicked out of every university he's ever been in because women just cannot help themselves but have sex with them. He can't, can't stop having sex. That's his problem. Often is it that seems like against his will. Most of the time it seems like it's against his... Well, he does seem to enjoy it because, mm-hmm. you know, what red-blooded American uh, man, boy man, uh, wouldn't love uh, women constantly throwing themselves at him. But it's uh, no picnic, let me tell you. It's yeah, uh, yeah. it's uh, it's it's going to be a bit of an issue. Yeah, he's been expelled from his last school because he was uh, caught in the shower with a coed, and, and then and then the hot guidance counselor Victoria Gutbottom, who was like Victoria Gutbottom. Oh my god, I, <laughs> I just noticed sure. that. Yeah, who's like way too young, way too not British, and. Uh, <laughs> He's blown all of his grandfather's tuition money that he he set up for them because he's been at four different colleges. And as his... There was a great cut, by the way, where... You know, the dean busts in and the sexy guidance counselor sitting on his lap. He goes, my dad's going to kill me. Cut to his dad literally strangling the life out of him. (laughs) Dean Dewberry. And then the mom pulls up and says, you're going to kill him. And then like that scene bookends yeah. with her like arms yeah. around yeah. his neck. <laughs> and then uh, as they're sitting there on the couch, uh, we get an ad for uh, Buster Burger University. Where, as I said earlier, yeah, this is based on the very real hamburger university that McDonald's sets up. But yeah, Russell's big plan. Well, the thing we forgot to mention is that if he doesn't get a university degree of some sort, his parents are going to cut him off completely. That's the central conflict of the movies. Mm-hmm. He needs a diploma from somewhere. Any place. Barber and, college, clown college, just anything. Any kind of like higher bur- education. Burger college. Burger yeah. college. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the uh, that's the conceit of a Hamburger the Motion right. Picture, a movie that I'm somewhat ashamed to say I laughed at quite a bit. I did too. I did too. <laughs> yeah. But like, it didn't make me feel proud of myself to mm. laugh at this movie. No. Like no. I, <laughs> <laughs> like no, like there's like a certain kind, like it's a screwball comedy, but there are like certain there's like. The occasionally clever line where, like, something will get twisted into a sexual innuendo, like, uh... I'd go farther than... I wouldn't say it's a screwball comment. I, I, this is literally a cartoon, mm-hmm. is what this is. It's it's a live-action cartoon. It, it applies cartoon logic to <laughs> all of the scenes, all of the characters. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I think... <laughs> I found myself laughing at it so much because it was I, zany. It was zany. Yeah. I like that type. I like that type of humor. I, I like dumb cartoons. Mm-hmm. I like the lowest form of comedy <laughs> out there. Just like yeah, people walking around farting and like mm-hmm. falling over and bad things happening. You know, p- people get like smacked in the face or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Russell's classmates. Let's talk about <laughs> the, uh, the the cavalcade of uh, characters that we're introduced to. All right. First up, we first guy he meets is a. Uh, the nerd whose name is uh, Zipnik, I believe. Zipster. <laughs> Zipster. Which is yeah. fine because his one joke is no one can pronounce his name. Yeah. 
It's the real, it's the Eddie Deason character with the big glasses and the whiny voice. And, uh, yeah, he's just overly enthusiastic about everything. Mm-hmm. Just stereotypical nerd. And he's like, ah! Yeah, I can even understand him half the time. Like he was <laughs> obsessed with Buster Burger. Yeah, he knew, it's like, kind of sad. Like, yeah, I can't go any lower than that. <laughs> just like, he, he, seemed, he seemed pretty happy. He had a yeah, he had a subplot that we're gonna get into. Ish. Where uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Actually, you know, what? like I will say, he did seem like the happiest character. Like, just happy to be there, and he kind of gets thrown through the ringer a little bit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he, he nothing come, good ever comes his way. <laughs> well, nothing good really comes the way for anyone in this movie. But uh, uh, at the very least, uh, the other characters can say that they uh, they they ended the movie with their human DNA intact. This yeah. this, this guy ends the movie something mm-hmm. something else, something other. Yeah. We're gonna get we're gonna talk about that because that's an entire thing that we have to dissect and go over because that makes absolutely no sense. But uh, uh, we have the, we have the nerd. We have, uh, we, Fred, have a, we had Fred Domino, who was like the Lothario, <laughs> tough talking kind of sweetheart kind of guy. Who's just he sleeps with every woman. The fact that like Russell doesn't sleep with anyone is made up for the fact that Fred tries to sleep with every woman, especially the dean's wife. Well, Russell, but Russell's not there to have sex. He's he's there to he's there to study, and he's here he's here to put exactly. his, he's here to put his head down, and he's he's here to hit those books, and he's here to to get his. Hamburger degree. This is a stupid uh, fucking movie. Yeah. Uh, every one every point, sentence. Yeah, I bet you just said <laughs> that Fred guy had freaking Twinkies on his gooch. Yes. <laughs> like, what the hell was that about? He's he like, he the Twinkies. God. Yeah. There's lots of there's there's rules about Burger University. Uh, you're not. You're, it's essentially a compound. You're not allowed to leave. Uh, you're not allowed to bring in outside food. There was a big thing. All the characters kept saying. Ah, uh, we gotta get out of here. We gotta get some real food. For a movie that's so centered around the concept of food, we never saw what the cafeteria looked like. But it was probably burgers. I mean, it was probably <laughs> just the same shit, yeah, everywhere mm-hmm. else. But yeah, like, there was a, there was like, like armed guards around the place. They're not allowed to leave. It's yeah. a prison. There was a nun, his sister Sarah, <laughs> uh, who's constantly getting whacked in the face, cause that's funny. <laughs> there was Presta Popo Nick, who is a character who is over weight and his central joke is oh, that God. every time he gets a craving <laughs> for food he attaches a high voltage electric shock device and becomes chris farley <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, what, was, what was the name of the hispanic student conchita but she had like it was like Con- conchita consuela, consuela martinez uh, martin uh, burrito conchita margarita consuelo mario Eugenia lopez mezzanine just like the biggest stereotype you can yeah. imagine. The, yeah. She is a freedom fighter of some kind. From the, the land of guacamole. The, the country of guacamole. Okay. She's a she's a guacamolean freedom fighter. Who's uh, come to America to find a man. Yeah. So she, so she tries to have sex with uh, Russell multiple times. Always spurns her advances. Sometimes at gunpoint. Yeah. And then <laughs> we can't not mention the character of Magneto Jones, who is like a soul singer. He, he He's first introduced coming in in the back of a cop car in handcuffs, protesting, and we... we like, he's dressed like Rick James, and he keeps saying, like, I'm a celebrity, like, what are you doing? Like, I'm not supposed to be here. We find out that there's never been a black graduate to come out of Buster Burger University, so they've abducted this black man. A famous black man. And they will not let him leave. <laughs> This is a comedy from the 80s where they straight up (laughs) kidnap and imprison a black man. And it's played entirely for laughs. Ugh. Yep, that's that character's yeah. one discerning trait. And then we got, and then of course we talk about the, uh, the antagonist of the uh, movie. Uh, the Grill Sergeant. Grill Sergeant Druton, played by Dick Butkus. Which could have been the name of a character in this movie. Dick, yeah. <laughs> Dick Butkus was a football player. He played for nine years with the Chicago Bears. And he, uh, was, um, pretty well, I, he, I don't think he ever went to the Super Bowl. I don't know anything. This isn't like a sports podcast, but yeah, I looked up who Dick Butt Dick Butkus for all intents and purposes was the biggest name mm-hmm. in this movie but on his Wikipedia page I did uh, find a quote from Hall of Famer Deacon Jones is that a famous football player Not, I don't know but the, the Deacon Jones apparently said about Dick Butkus Dick was an animal I called him a stone maniac he was a well-conditioned animal every time he hit you he tried to put you in the cemetery not the hospital 
And he approaches his acting much the same way. Yeah, he plays a uh, Grill Sergeant Druton, who is our uh, hilariously comic foil to the shenanigans of uh, Russell and his wacky pals. Do you guys ever remember having a Drill Sergeant when you went to college or university? Uh, <laughs> it's Grill Sergeant. Grill Sergeant. Grill Sergeant. He, he didn't spend 18 years in the hamburger military to be yeah. called Drill Sergeant. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> what was yeah. that the whole machine part too? Yeah, like the burger so machine. Like, there's a high tech burger making machine that they have to. That's one of like the first tests that the grill sergeant puts them through. And we're sitting there and we're watching. There's this there's this complicated conveyor belt where the meat comes down and it's cooked by lasers. <laughs> and there's and like flashing lights. It looks like the old Adam West Bat computer. Yeah. And, and like across with like just some conveyor belts. Yeah. And they try to recreate that I Love Lucy scene with the with the conveyor belts oh, where it just goes too fast and like Russell can't keep up with it. Except instead of chocolates, there's like sauce <laughs> and, and burgers flying and- everywhere. Everywhere, patties. There's so much goo in this movie. Yeah. This movie has so much. It's like a Nickelodeon movie. There's, <laughs> people are just yeah. constantly being. Okay. All right. So at one point, uh, Fred and Russell are sick of hanging out in their fucking like hamburger bed dormitory. Yeah, everyone has the, hamburger beds <laughs> with the cow ass hanging off the wall, and they just said like, "We got to go out and we got to get some." Gotta get some food. Go to go to a Chinese restaurant. They run into not only the wife of the dean, who's just like this fusty airhead, but also like the dean's daughter, who is like the girl next door, but also like a professor. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, it's she, like they're the, they're the love interests of Russell and Fred. And uh, anyways, they get found there by Drill Sergeant Druden after he uncovers Fred uh, going down on the wife vigorously. <laughs> Let's play a little bit of the scene where they order the food because you know it's an eighties. <laughs> sex comedy so of course this scene is treated with the uh, the utmost respect that can be afforded to chinese culture these these are the menu items that they uh, that they go down can i take your order please or food oh uh, yeah four sichuan spare ribs uh, four gangbang foods and tomatoes four sesame chicken balls and tomatoes Four Wong Hung Lows. Mm. And four Mao Tse Tongues. Does that about do it? Yeah, it'll do it to start. Like Hung La, Hung Low. Hung Far Low. Yeah. Uh, and then Mao Tse... Gang, gang Bang Food. <laughs> gang Bang Food. And then just Mao Say Tongue because yeah. we've run we we couldn't think of any more sex puns so mm-hmm. just yeah Mao Say Tongue mm-hmm. so yeah um, the grill sergeant uh, uh, almost catches them so they hide under the table Fred uh, can't uh, contain himself so he like goes down on uh, yeah. the, the wife what were, what was your uh, kind of linguist from la- this is the second movie we've watched in a row where we have to come up with kind of linguist jokes Jesus I, I don't the know. little man in the boat yeah the lick nest monster the lick nest the monster yeah, yeah Fred does the lick nest monster mm-hmm. uh, on the dean's wife yeah. and then as punishment for breaking uh, some of the university rules, uh, Fred and Russell are put in pickle sweat boxes and (laughs) get dumped with torture sauce. There's a button that says torture sauce. And it's such an unpleasant scene to watch because it's... uh, They're enjoying it. He looks like... Yeah, he doesn't... He's like, oh yeah, this is great. It's something (laughs) like, yeah, the scene wasn't shot properly, so (laughs) it doesn't look like they're not enjoying it and they're just getting covered in... (laughs) Oh, God, it was really not fun. Yeah, that was just... To watch. That was Should weird. We, um, okay, let's talk about this chicken subplot because I we we had to rewind and we had to watch this entire scene uh-huh. twice because so, I still don't understand what's going on. So Zipster takes a shine to Doctor Mole, who I guess is like the chief geneticist at this weird yeah. prison school. He's the, wa- he's the wacky, lovable genetic scientist. Yeah. So he volunteers, Zippy volunteers as his lab assistant, aka or guinea pig, and they front load him with 30 cc's of bird cum. Oh, him. I've given him 20 cc's of bird cum. And, which, <laughs> let's, I just, should we you, just like, should we play it? For you listening at home, we'll play the scene, but I just want to reiterate, um, yes. Jameson said that a character is injected with 30 cc's of Bird cum. That's a line <laughs> from this movie. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll di- we'll try to dissect it because uh, God, it's so it's so baffling okay. what happens in it. Okay, that would be almost as if he had a bucket of chicken every day 
for 500 years. Is there any chance of brain damage? He moved. He's alive. He's alive. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> the professor, okay, because I, I really want to break this down because I really want to try and understand it because it's really confusing. The professor Zippy should be dead. The prof, but the professor has has bioengineered synthetic fried chicken and injected it. But into- why? Why is he injected him with bird cum? Because what does that have to do with anything? Because there's a hardly mentioned subplot where the uh, the founder of the company, Lyman Funk, he wants to break into the fried chicken franchise. And Buster Burger is exclusively, like, a, a burger business. I understand that. Mm-hmm. Why did he inject him with bird cum? That's really the overall question well, of this you, entire podcast that we need to figure out. Well, you see, why did he inject him with bird cum? <laughs> you see, it's Nick, a, why did he inject I him with I don't know! <laughs> why did you invite me here? <laughs> why did you make me watch this? <laughs> I, I mean... I feel like it really turned different there in the movie. I don't know. The bird come part. That was... Mm-hmm. Okay, let's, let's, let's keep going. Not expecting that. Let's keep going because this scene keeps going. Are you hungry? I come for some corn and grain. Corn in the rain? Why would he want to go? No, no, Professor. Corn and grain. Corn. Oh. <laughs> so the <laughs> line. So, I do love that line. That's a pretty... <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Porn in the rain. I, I can, I can see a, a version of myself when I when I'm like uh, maybe like younger and maybe I had this on VHS. I can see that probably being one of my favorite lines. Yeah, I, I just I like losing. Porn in the rain. I get a feeling this was a really fun movie to work on and write. <laughs> At the very least, yeah, it looks like everyone's having a, a, a lot of fun in this. Okay, we still have we haven't cracked this yet though. Okay, <laughs> Is so that a chicken joke. The bird. The bird. <laughs> Come. We haven't we haven't plucked this yet. <laughs> no. um, the chi- okay, so the, the chicken come. <laughs> oh my! When God. I started my day, I didn't think we'd have to like have a deep dive on multiple uh, multiple uh, chicken come. So okay, so the bird come. <laughs> There's no way I can start a sentence like that. But you know what? The, the bird semen has turned zippy into a, a man chicken hybrid and he's clucking like a man wants, who thinks he's a chicken or? he wants corn and grain but then they feed him synthetic chicken which is troubling mm-hmm. and, and this is why I don't understand this is all part this... of this is all part of the research for like how they're gonna like segue into the chicken market. It doesn't but, make sense. But why did he turn a man into a chicken? I don't know. <laughs> he wasn't going to make the it, it it seems to me like turning a student into a chicken man and creating synthetic chicken for the restaurant to sell are two completely different things. They don't have anything to do. He turned him into a chicken seemingly for no reason. Okay, I think we figured it out. Yeah. I think he just you know, did it because oh, you know what? Okay, I, I you know what? I figured it out. I figured it out. This movie's fucking stupid. Mm. That's what it, it is. Was it was added for shock value. It was. Yeah. Just, they wanted to shock us a bit. They just and, had to. And, the shock value, you know, we're going to throw this in here. And, this... and speaking of shock, uh, the scene ends when the lab just for some reason starts sparking. All, like, like a fireworks display goes of off course. in the background while, like, the dean and the professor are arguing. The lab just blows up for <laughs> they, no reason. They say something, but we we had to rewatch it a couple of times, and we don't know what the fuck they were saying because the, the acoustics on this the movie are so fucking terrible. Everything's going off at once. Yes, do you see my formula? It's simply this. All I have to do is take chicken gun. Chicken shit! Chicken shit! Chicken shit! You idiot punk! What do you think I'm standing around this laboratory with this fortune? And you call me chicken shit? Nothing! They're shouting at each other, nothing makes sense, and then the scene ends. There's lots of scenes that make... Actually, basically every scene involving this chicken man makes no sense. There's a scene later where the two of them have to go through, I guess, food detectors. Two security guards won't let them through. Because one guy's now 100% chicken. Zippy something. can't go through because he's chicken. And it results in him being led to a steamy shower room yeah. where two older heavyset women wearing masks and bathing suits come and lead him away while he's clucking nervously. Then we hear like like a pop and he comes back and he's laid an egg and he says Thanks girls. I needed that. 
and then that's the end of that scene. Who were those women? Where was that? What were they doing? That, why? Why? Why chicken? Why chicken cum? Why is there chicken cum that, being injected into these I people? Gotta say, I was I was pretty freaked out by that point. <laughs> I didn't know what was gonna happen. <laughs> like it was oh. it was it was an unnerving scene anyway because it was like misty and like you couldn't quite see in the background like what was going on. It was freaky, and this is like a fucked up movie <laughs> in the first place. I want to yeah. go back briefly. Let's talk about Dean. Because okay. this this guy this guy's great. I love yeah. him. He's just like this gaunt, James Rebhorn looking motherfucker. I don't know if you know who that is, but he look he looks exactly like this guy. Uh-huh. And every time we see this character, he's spouting his uh, his burger philosophy. And uh, there's like a his scene, manifesto, his, yeah. his his mantra: You eat it, you buy it. You eat it, you buy it. Bull is our business. Bull is our business. And two of my favorite burger, Buster Burger sayings that are part of the uh, Buster Burger motto are... We reserve the right to refuse service to assholes like you. We reserve the right to refuse service to assholes like you. And my personal favorite... Put those cookies back, motherfucker. Put those cookies back, motherfucker. And that's an actual <laughs> slogan that this restaurant chain has. I'm not going to lie. I kind of want to work for Buster Burger. Yeah. <laughs> I got to say, like, Buster Burger in the movie, it's kind of depicted as, like, the McDonald's of this universe. It is, it's everywhere. It's like they sell, like, a million burgers a day. It doesn't seem to have any competition. No competition whatsoever. (laughs) And yet, like, it just seems awful to people. Like, an old woman dies in the drive-thru. Like, she gets a heart attack. Hi, I'm Mr. Pickle. What's it gonna be? Um, one burger, and some fries, and, um, and a malted. Oh, and would you put cheese on that, please? Just say Buster Cheese Bull Chips and a chocolate Buster Shake, madam. Okay. Don't say it! Shut off, Pickle. I don't like talking to machines. Look, Toots, take that falcon you're driving, chain it up, and shove it where the sun don't shine. Oh! Oh, oh, Like, an old woman will die, they instruct you to be rude to the customers, imprison their students, but, like, it just seems like an awful organization. Like, yeah. there's, there's a scene where they're having their oral exam, and they're just like, okay, uh, so here's a scenario. Pregnant woman comes to the, the, the restaurant <laughs> looking for a, for a payphone. Uh, she hasn't spent up any money on food. What do you do? And they're like, ah, we don't have pay phones. Or like, a customer is uh, throws up, what do you do? First I shove his face in it, then I wipe it up with his clothes, yeah. then I kick him the fuck out. And Very good. Yeah. <laughs> It just seems terrible. Why would anyone want to go here? I would. I would absolutely work here. This, this seems like this seems great. Let's talk about the menu. So the Buster Burger menu includes the Super Buster Burger, the Not So Super Buster Burger, the Son of Buster Burger, the Baby Buster Burger, the Cud Burger, which in parentheses is Lyman Vunk's favorite, the Buster Burger on a stick, refried spleens under specialty items. Flaming bull kebabs, deep fried cowlicks, Rocky Mountain oyster bar. I'm pretty sure that means testicles. It is, yeah. That's Rocky Mountain oysters are testicles, right? Bull baiter special and cow catchers, and in parentheses, that is baked in longhorn batter. Mm. Awesome. I, I would try That's every great. one of those. I would try everything. Cud is partially digested food returned from the first stomach to of ruminants to the mouth for further chewing. Like That's what cows do. Like That's what we... cows do. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Chewing cud. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's Lyman Voss' favorite is the cud burger. <laughs> Oh my god! The guy who talks like Patrick Stewart. Yeah, he's a like he's a fun character. He's great. But like the more you see with him, the more you kind of like think that Buster Burger is a cult because he has mm. he there is a church and he does like these like stirring sermons like the burger meat for the people and then the people <laughs> like mindlessly drone back the burger meat for the people and then there's a choir singing Burger Luya. <laughs> Uh, he speaks from the Book of Munchies. Like, that was awesome. 
But people are like, and everyone's wearing like their red uniforms, and people are like, you goose. can't leave the compound. They no. kidnap people. There are armed guards. You can't eat anything but what they serve you. No sex. It's a fucking cult. I don't know if there are armed guards, but they definitely they definitely stop people. From, I know for from sure. I... the uh... so okay. Yeah. Since we're talking about security guards, this is something that I'm um, I'm pretty thrilled to uh, share with you guys. Uh, I went down the cast list for this movie, and in all of the lead roles, there's there's no one in. Dick Butkus is the most well known mm. person in this movie, <laughs> and neither none of us know who he is. However, if you go all the way down the cast list, there are actually two recognizable faces who went on to do much bigger things. Buried in the cast of this movie. And both of them play security guards. The first is... I I had to look everywhere to see if I could find where this guy's scene was. I think I have it figured out. But this is an early movie role for Saturday Night Live alumni John Lovitz. Really? John Lovitz. John John Lovitz Lovitz from from The Critic. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I believe he is at this point. One of these guys. And I think I recognized his voice at one point. Look, that guy has a gun. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> I think I think that might be him. It's impossible to tell because the quality is so bad. But I think it might be. But it's after Magneto gets him. Get on your knees. I think that might be John Lovitz. I really, really couldn't tell you. Oh, wow. Uh, one way or the other. Huh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. It's weird, right? So John Lovitz, John Lovitz plays an extra in this movie. The <laughs> other one, here's the ironic thing, is that the more recognizable face, you can't really see him, you can only hear his voice. The other recognizable name isn't really known for his face, but he's known for his voice. This movie's got Rob Paulson in it. What? Which is, That's crazy! Which I was is, just talking about him before. Which is, why, which is actually why I wanted you to be the guest on this show, because oh, I know that you man. love that. I love, I love how you brought that up on your own. <laughs> Yeah, I did no research because you told me no research. That's why and I, I just yeah. walked in and said, what, I don't know what the fuck I'm watch today. Yeah, this that, is like last where, day Oh my yeah. god, this yeah. is so cool. That's, are you... <laughs> I love Rob Paulson. All right. This is his scene right here. How did... He's the second guy. I thought this guy was Bruce Campbell for some reason. That was Rob Paulson. Is it the tall guy in the back? Back... Stick a garment register on this baby. Ah, right, you're clean, Doc. Say, Doc, why don't you call him uh, Dog Balls? <laughs> <laughs> that is famed That's voice amazing. actor. That's amazing. The Balls voice said. of Pinky. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Pinky Yakko. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. I was, he's also Donatello and Raphael. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love Rob Paulson he's because Raphael, he, yeah. he's, yeah. Played, he's played Raphael and he has played Donatello. And both of those voices are completely different while still... Unmistakably, him. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. amazing. He's super talented. He's I like voice of best my part of the movie. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the voice of my childhood, and now delighting me in as, a, as an adult. I love his Donatello. I actually, I, I think his Donatello is Donatello's my favorite Ninja Turtle. Oh, I think nice. I, I think his portrayal in in that Nickelodeon TV show is I, I think it's the best overall version of Donatello. I, I, yeah, I, I like I like how you weren't a fan of uh, Corey Feldman in the live. Oh, I forgot movie. about Corey Feldman. You know what? <laughs> Never mind. I take it back. Nothing. Uh, clean, sober, back on television. <laughs> Things are looking up for the Feldster. <laughs> All right, that's so. amazing. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe it. I was just saying because that's the podcast I listen yeah. to every mm-hmm. day. That's oh, why I invited you. Oh, we nice. watching, I'm honored. We were watching yeah. that scene, and I'm all like, don't recognize the him. The payoff don't is Don't here. recognize him, please. I don't know why I thought it was Bruce Campbell, because he was so expressive in that one scene. Yeah. He kept saying Doc all yeah. the time, yeah. and I was like, oh, he's kind of... I was like, wow, mm. that's from, amazing. From what I can tell, this is one of his only live-action yeah. roles. Mm. Yeah. Apparently he was in Jack in the Box commercials when he was starting out. I oh. see that. Yeah, yeah, but that's amazing. Yeah. Oh, my God. All right, so uh, <laughs> they had finished their oral exam, and uh, then they have, like, their final test, which is to manage a Buster Burger for, like, an afternoon. Yeah. And this is when max hijinks ensues. So, first of oh. all... First of all... <laughs> we should, should we should issue an apology, uh, an apology to the heavy set community? <laughs> yeah... Oof. If if you're if if you're the sort of person who has body issues as as, as I am, you know I I, ha, I have issues 
still uh, feeling com- comfortable in my skin, comfortable in my body. If you're if you're someone who is struggling through that, number one, you're not alone. Um, number two, don't watch this. movie. Number two, to stay as far away from this movie oh, as possible. Yeah, because Hamburger the Motion Picture treats the overweight like they are a subspecies of human beings. They are yeah. monsters. So they, they are literal monsters. So mm. the running the Buster Burger location seems to be going all right until a busload of competitive eaters. The it's eating a, club. It's an eating club. It's it, that's what they that's what they do. Mm-hmm. They get together and they go they go eat. And yeah, it's a bus full of the 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 biggest um, Propulent, uh, <laughs> corpulent? How do you, is that a, Propulent? Isn't that how you Propulent. pronounce it? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a made up word from The Simpsons. Oh, yeah. It's like, it, it, I can't remember what it's from. It's all like, uh, uh, the cromulent. Mm, um, perfectly cromulent. Yeah. Word. But, uh, yeah, so, um, this movie it seems to think that w- when a fat person goes into a restaurant, they don't order food like a normal person. Mm. They'll just grab the food that other people are eating and stuff it in their face right in front of them. Uh, <laughs> they they kind of just walk through like a like a plague. <laughs> Those twins were terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the every bur- time? The like... burger twins were terrifying. Yeah, absolutely. 60 double busters, no pickles, 40 bull chips, 22 diet colas. <laughs> diet? Was, uh, what is what is crump- corpulent? Corpulent. But what is, no, what's crumpulent though? Yeah. Is what I cromulent mean. was the word from crumulent. Simpsons. Oh uh, yes. What, what does crumpulent mean? A, well, corpulent means a fat, fattish, obese, overweight. A fat, a sh- fattish. Uh, <laughs> of a, a short, somewhat corpulent man is the description. It, it, here, that that it's a real All word. Right. Look, look up crumpulent and get back to me. Jesus. So. The, the eating club uh, scares away all of the regular customers, eat l- literally their entire stock. They have no burgers left by the end of it. And their plan for getting the eating club out of the burger location is to serve them all milkshakes <laughs> with industrial strength laxative. And uh, which, which leads you to think that the scene is going to end one way, but it manages to end in a way that... <laughs> No one Gets could even see worse. It. No one could see coming. So, and then this was your favorite line. Yeah, yet. It's like when they're all going, it's like the random guys like we gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> That's the way you said it. We need to get to the bathroom. <laughs> it was clearly ADR. Yeah, yeah. 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 So they all race to the bathroom like, and pile in like a clown car in, into one stall. <laughs> into the one Where it's already occupied by a Japanese man with a with a camera around his head. Because I guess at one point in time there was a stereotype that uh, Japanese tourists always took photos mm. of everything. That's one of those yeah. weird, old, outdated stereotypes that you're like. How did that become a thing? Yeah, I take yeah. lots of pictures when I'm a tourist. Yeah, America. why was that a thing? That's a weird thing that, yeah, that we yeah. glommed onto for a while. But anyways, uh, he takes their picture of them like as they are all in the washroom, he uses the flash bulb, which is enough to release the hounds. <laughs> yeah, the bathroom explodes. Yeah. <laughs> and the bathroom explodes, and <laughs> like, like, the <laughs> water went through it. How does that make any sense? The whole side of the building just, like, blows up. It's not like a 1920s <laughs> flashbulb, like, you're on, like, the red car, and, like, they have to, every time you take a photo, you have to unscrew the bulb and put a new one in. <laughs> it's it, it's a it's a 1980s camera. That yeah. wouldn't ignite anything. <laughs> the flash just startled them enough that, like, all of these fat people, their combined yeah. power of their, their, their bowels... Yeah. Or just unleashed on the world. And then they, wa- they waddle away. Seemingly, no one has to go to the bathroom again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We forgot to mention that there's one skinny person in the eating club. Oh, yeah, just yeah. randomly And yet they don't do them. anything with that. There's not anything really... There's no joke there. At one point, afterwards, the bikers show up and trash No, the but before that, the cop. Right. The cop gets, like, insulted over the drive through thing, right? Because the grill sergeant yeah. has hacked. Yeah. yeah. Hacked he the drive <laughs> yeah. And then what, so the grill sergeant starts insulting him because he's a cop, 
and the cop starts getting angry, saying, like, let me talk to your manager. But then he calls him Kuta Kinte. Yeah. And it's like, oh. okay, you started off, like, being anti-cop, but then it went weirdly just, racial. Just yeah. <laughs> and it, well, it's, and it's even weird to me because, like, the racial stuff that I was saying, that's awful. But, like, it's been established before that you are permitted as a Buster Burger employee to insult anyone. You can be rude to the customers. Yeah, but like every situation, you got to read the room. Because then when the biker gang comes in, mm-hmm. Fred was all like, we reserve the right to not serve assholes like you. And everyone's like, no! <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you can say that to people. Mm-hmm. You, you can you can tell an adorable little girl, put those cookies down, motherfucker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She didn't look like she gave a shit. She was just like, yeah, she still it. took it after her. She took it. Was, <laughs> Fuck that was, you. That was, the, that was the only take. Fuck me? Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> that was the only take that they were going to do yeah. that day. Even though they, they could have easily said, like, okay, little girl, we want you to look startled. And it's just all like, I'm going to take these fucking cookies. Yeah. And like, all right, we got to move on. We got to move on. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the bikers trashed the entire place. The cops show up, but they don't retaliate. In fact, like, they see, like, the bikers and the cops settle with their differences and, like, trash the place together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the bikers and the cops came together, and that's, you know, like, there's a, a redneck biker gang and an entire team of exclusively African-American police officers, and they leave together as friends. Because they came together and they destroyed this restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> we're not so different, you and I. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's like pretty much what they were saying. <laughs> and and you, just... <laughs> you know what? You know what's frustrating is because we're making these jokes, but if this movie had maybe just an ounce more cleverness and, and mm-hmm. witticism, it could have made that joke itself. There, but it, there but were it didn't. like a couple of like you know, clever side gags. There was the one where like. The, the dean's wife in the church, she wanted to, like, send a message like to Freddy. That. I like that. And, like, you said you liked it. Uh, like, she, she wrote right. on the inside of the Bible as she's holding up so Freddy can see in the pew behind her, meet me behind the library later, <laughs> and XOXO, and then she signed it, me. <laughs> that's, because <laughs> she's an airhead! That was actually, yeah. that's, that's, that's really, pretty, that's, that's a, really good, that was a really good psychic. I really, <laughs> I really appreciated that quite a bit. <laughs> after the eating club, and after the cops and the bikers destroy everything, one final indignity is that uh, the grill sergeant manages to steer a truck with with two uh, Hispanic gentlemen uh, singing their hearts out, uh, oh, uh, carting uh, live chickens into the building, and of course the car explodes and feathers go everywhere, and uh, the building is trashed. But through this, one of the chickens manages to find its way into the deep fryer. And the entire thing gets fried. Whole, oh, like, oh, like a live chicken is like d- is dead. <laughs> and then when the dean shows up. And is is like, oh, what's happened to my restaurant? This is highly irregular. <laughs> <laughs> the nun, Sister Sarah, pulls the chicken, the whole chicken, out of the deep fryer, takes a big bite out of it, and she says, "It's tasty, by it's God." Tasty it's tasty, by God. Yeah. And uh, that is the uh, the slogan that he needed to kick off his fried chicken uh, human hybrid human <laughs> hybrid bird cum type thing. <laughs> That was the only thing holding them back. Yep. Not ethics. Not yeah. like... And they all get A's. And they all pass. Yeah. And, and, and the, they have a graduation the, ceremony. The, the grill sergeant gets demoted to... Th- this is what I couldn't believe. Like, <laughs> the, grill, the grill sergeant gets demoted to picking up paper. And mm. then in the graduation scene, we see him grumbling and picking up paper. Just leave! Yeah. No! <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't have to be there anymore. Mm. Just go! Just don't even... Ah. Well, yeah. They sung the hamburger song after it. That was pretty cool. I don't cool. think anybody ever... <laughs> Nobody ever leaves. Like at the in the graduation ceremony, uh, Magneto Jones sings like this stirring new song yeah. about burgers. At, at the, when we first met this character, I, he was a prisoner. When we when we, <laughs> we last see this character, he's been fully indoctrinated. Yeah. I, hate, I hate to correct you; it's the uh, it's the same song as before. Oh, is it's it the burger? Oh, it's, the bur- it's the burger jingle from here. And singing. then this is his version.
God, we. I wish I could get like a CD together with like all a, a of best the, of hits from best of hits. The motion yeah, picture. I'm. I'm sure a soundtrack must exist in some version out there. Yeah. Mm. All right. Do either of you have anything else you want to talk about? That movie was amazing. <laughs> I loved it. Well, would you recommend it's, this movie? <laughs> if you like Rob Paulson, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if you ever listen to it. That's yeah. my weird recommendation. Yeah, uh, I highly <laughs> recommend this movie. This movie is dumb for all the right reasons. It's like a textbook. Uh, that's a university joke, but it's a textbook <laughs> screwball comedy. Holy shit, you guys. Like, it's it's just wacky, zany hijinks all the way through. Yeah, of the two sex comedies we watched, this one had its heart in the right place. And it mm-hmm. was, I mean... Hell, they had a protagonist that wasn't actively trying to get laid. Yeah, that was <laughs> his journey. He was trying not to get laid. And uh, he ends up with the girl anyway. Yeah, because you gotta end up with the girl. I mean, like, let's not, let's not kid ourselves. Uh, Hamburger, the motion picture, is not a progressive movie. No. But... It's so monumentally stupid mm. <laughs> that you kind of can't hate it. Because mm-hmm. it's, yeah. it's just a big cartoon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And all it does is to set out to make something fucking strange, barely coherent, mm-hmm. and it completely succeeds. It, it is without a doubt the type of movie the filmmakers set out to make. Yeah. I was laughing a lot, so mm-hmm. I was entertained. Absolutely. Like, a lot of the actors seem to be having a ball in their roles, too. Mm-hmm. Like, like the dean and the professor. Like, I'm sure some of the uh, the minority actors, like, had some questionable, uh, you know, lines that they had to say. Uh, but... They were probably paid well. Oh, well. <laughs> Do you think That's they got like, paid well little... for this? Probably got a hot meal. <laughs> yeah, free burgers. So I just want to wrap up. Unless either of you have any other passing thoughts about anything you desperately want to talk about that happened in Hamburger the Motion Picture. Pickle what? Pickle, pickle what? Pickle, pickle death? Is it pickle question mark? Is it pickle resuscitation? Because I wrote that down too. I wrote pickle, pickle death question mark. Oh, because they know. were the pregnant pickle. That they yeah, that's, that's what, what it was. was. Oh my yeah. god, that was gross too. That's why I wrote pickle death. I was just like, what the f- WTF? <laughs> <There's a whole, laughs> my notes are so like, just yeah, you're gonna look at your question notebook. marks. Yeah, you're gonna look at your notebook later and be like, is this a dream journal? Is this the diary of a madman? <laughs> no, like, I'm kind of journal. hoping nobody sees these notes. Yeah, like, just why tear is, these pairs just pages? Eat, just tear them out, eat them. Yeah, fuck off, know. pickles, woman. Fuck off. <laughs> I don't. I don't want time. Don't. What? <laughs> Full of bull. Can you just read? Dick Butch's tub of crap. Oh yeah, Kelly Cole's like got a tub of crap after when he first meets the. <laughs> he's like when he first meets the fat guy. Chris Farley guy's like, hey, you tub of crap. Yeah, yeah. Dick Butkus. Poor guy. Well, that's the other thing. Yeah, Dick Butkus has a lot of great insults, mm. and they kind of pile uh, one on top of another, and you're kind of like, Haha, I like this guy's insults. <laughs> oh, they're really fun. Do not raise your voice to me, slime wad. Clam it, dark breath. Real Sergeant Troop to you, scum bucket. Tub of crap. And then, and then, and then he just calls Magneto Jones the F word. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh, and there, there's the 80s. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. We were just having a like good, clean fun. We here. were having a lot of fun over here. Yeah, but there was a there was a, a a montage of them going to burger class, I guess. And there's one scene where the professor is um, operating on a pregnant pickle, and the pickle doesn't make it, but he pulls out little gherkins. There's onionology where they're all cutting onions and they're all crying. And uh, yeah, it's the Hispanic just... lady had a machete in that seat. Yeah, oh, it's more of the same stuff. All right, I want to wrap up as I often do. I like to uh, dive deep into the careers of the people who made these movies. I'll talk a little bit briefly about the career of uh, Mike Marvin. As I said earlier, Mike Marvin went on to uh, this was the first movie that he directed, but he went on to have a, a pretty full career of movies that uh, all look terrible. Released the same year that this movie came out, 1986, his follow-up was a sci-fi thriller called The Wraith, which stars Charlie Sheen as a murder victim who's possessed by an alien ghost and takes revenge on the street gang who murdered him. Mm. Uh, He then (laughs) wrote and directed 1992's Wish Man, about a homeless man who finds a genie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, he, I that. he then directed. <laughs> that's, that's the setup to a joke. <laughs> I just want to see that now. I want to yeah. see that. Oh, which man? <laughs> oh, that's a he then directed a string of movies where he went under a pseudonym. He directed <laughs> 1994's The Dragon Gate, 
which is a martial arts fantasy whose DVD box cover proudly proclaims it was banned in Korea for some reason. I'm not really sure <laughs> oh why he was so proud of that. Hey, I'll show, I'll show, but I'll show yeah, you. I'll put it in the um, video. Uh, he, he, that movie, he's credited as uh, Michael Oliver. See, this is the this is the DVD cover for it, and right here in Big Bold, banned in Korea. That's bigger than the actual title. I don't know why. Jesus. I can't figure it out. He then directed a strain of softcore porn movies, where oh. he was credited as Jake Kesey. The names Madame Savant, Arranged Marriage, and Maui Heat. Mm. And his final credited movie is called Sunstorm, which is about a quartet of highly trained assassin sisters who team up to fight a terrorist played by sex icon Bo Derek, And it is my absolute pleasure to announce that God damn it. The Wraith, Wishman, and Maui Heat are all available on YouTube in their entirety. So <laughs> That's amazing. If you wanna... so, so run, don't walk. <laughs> the, the majority of this guy's filmography is on YouTube, and you can watch it right now. Actually, before we end the podcast, we won't include the entire thing, but let's pause for a moment. And let's go watch the trailer for The Wraith, because um, yes. it's fucking great. It's fucking great, you guys. Good trailer for The <laughs> All right, well. An evil force took his life. An unearthly power has brought him back. He is a phantom. A wraith. A cosmic spirit given another chance. A wraith, man! A ghost! An evil spirit, and it ain't cool! So we now we know what that is. So we we can't do an episode on it. But uh, I just I really wanted to share that with you guys because uh, holy crap, that was an amazing trailer. No, <laughs> that was an amazing Clint Howard. Uh, uh, the, He's a wraith, man. He ain't cool. He ain't cool. <laughs> that was great. What was, uh, what was going on there? Well, let's. Uh... Oh, cops are here! Oh, oh shit. shit! Oh, we got, we got, we got. Shit, shit! Uh, that's it for the podcast, everybody. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks for coming. Do Thank you, you so uh, much for coming here. Do man. you uh, you have anything you want to plug? You want to tell people about your uh, your uh, SoundCloud? Uh, oh, cool! Yeah, I like them on Talking Tunes. That's, yeah. that's what they always say. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, check out my animation demo. I currently don't have an agent, so if you want to listen to my demo on SoundCloud, it's Nick Rinka. At SoundCloud, that's it. My animation demo's on there, and there's a couple other things, old stuff. That's so many, years ago. but yeah, so, so many agents listen to this show. How many uh, yeah, um, Nick Rinka at uh, SoundCloud is my animation demo. Check it out. Sweet, It'd be really great if you guys could check it out because it's uh, yeah, some some stuff on these. Yeah, can you, can you give me a quick in a world? In a world, get ready to check Nick Rinka's SoundCloud demo this summer. <laughs> <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I, I forgot. About- I forgot until I listened to the SoundCloud. I used to he used to do that all the time at school. That was really funny. One man working at a shitty job. Once I don't know. <laughs> Could you do I'm one like, for uh, for the fuck is this? Like, oh, um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, us, uh, yeah. Get ready to watch the podcast. What the fuck is this? Coming soon. Yay! <laughs> I like it. I like it. No one, no one watches a podcast, but that's yeah. fine. You know what? That's, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, fix, we'll fix it in post. Thanks for listening to the show, everybody, and to Thanks play to play you out. It's hamburgers in America. It's hamburgers for America. <laughs> Playing us out, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Yeah. Hamburgers for America. You're welcome. <laughs>